um, the Lotus Elise is fitted with a pretty good braking system so there's no need to replace the braking system or even upgrade it uh, if you're going to do your occasional track day or normal road use now of course if you're going to be racing the car seriously then you want to get bigger discs bigger calibers and bigger brake pads and brake pads that work at different temperatures but i am not going to be talking about this i'm going to be talking about a, an upgrade that i will do on my car which is somewhere in between. But I will retain my standard uh, calibers on the car. Now, uh, your discs, they either are going to be worn out one day, they will be faulty one day or defective, or you just want to upgrade them. A faulty disc is either a disc which is cracked or a disc which has deep grooves in it and we all have had it that the brake pads were worn out during the track day and you have metal on metal and it causes deep grooves in, in the disc so then you can toss away the disc because you shouldn't be using it anymore um, or the disc can be actually uh, deformed uh, especially when it gets very hot then the heat disseminates into the center and then you could get you could get deformation so the disc will be a little bit wobbly so then you will have to replace it as well. When the disc is no longer straight, then you will feel it on your brake pedal. You will have a little vibration. You will also feel it at the steering wheel if the discs are at the front. At the back, you won't feel it on the steering wheel, of course, but you can still feel it a bit on the car that something is wrong with the brakes, then it's time to replace them. On the other hand, you may have normal wear and tear of them. So you will see then on the edges a little rim. And I have a little rim of about, I think this is about, yeah, this is about a millimeter or so, but that's okay. Um, but what you need to do uh, to check your normal wear and tear is measure the thickness of the discs. That is very important. And there's a minimum thickness specified in the Lotus manual. And you, you need to respect that because if you go below the minimum thickness, then you may have issues with your calibers and basically the pistons may pop out especially when the disc is getting real thin and your brake pads are getting pretty thin as well and then you really could have an issue uh, with the um, cylinders being popped out of the calipers and then you're really screwed. You might as well, just like I do, uh, consider to upgrade the discs. And when I say upgrade, I want to have less weight on my car. Um, the lighter the Lotus, the better the performance you know we don't have a hell of a lot of power on the engine we have enough but not a hell of a lot not compared to the muscle cars in the us however we almost beat every us car right with our little lotus we beat porsches and so on why do we beat them because the mass of the car is so light so if i can reduce the mass of the car with the same power in the engine then i will perform better and to me all little things do help uh, so I'm trying to save weight everywhere. And these discs are quite heavy. Um, four discs are about 26 kilograms. Now, I bought what we call aluminum bell discs. The disc is still metal, but the middle part is aluminum. And it's mounted on the disc with bolts, as you can see. So whenever this disc is um, worn out, I just undo the bolts, I keep the centerpiece, put another disc up. But the good thing about this is that the centerpiece is aluminum, so it's very light. Compared to the standard disc, this is all one solid piece of metal. So I'm saving around the car, so for four discs I'm saving 7.5 kilograms. Now you may consider that this is not very much, but it is a lot. And you have to see it in the bigger picture, if you save here and there on weight, your car will perform better, right? So, of course, they are not cheap. It's around 600 euros, but it's certainly worthwhile the money because they have a lot of advantages. Now, I had one guy uh, writing a note to me saying, well, you know what? I got rid of 80 kilograms of my Lotus Elise and it didn't cost me a penny. You know, and like, now how the hell did you do that? He said, well, I just left my wife at home. Uh, well, I just hope he didn't left his uh, credit card at home either, because then it could become more expensive. Anyhow, just a joke. Um, 
So yes, they are a bit expensive, but they have benefits. First of all, as I said, the weight. The second benefit is that they are far more resistant to deformation because the heat which is generated on the surface of the disc is not disseminated to the central part just because they have very small touch areas, as you can see. You know, it's not one big block, so the heat does not disseminate. That also means that my bearings and my central hub is now getting cooler. And I like that, you know, if I can reduce heat, I will. And that's another big benefit. So we got weight, easy maintenance, and actually we have heat reduction. Now these discs, when you buy them, they are, are of the exact same dimensions as the original discs, and that's important. So if you buy bell discs of some sort, make sure that they have the exact same dimensions as your original discs. And the reason for that is that you don't want to start playing around with readjusting the calibers by putting washers and spacers in just to match the disc. That's something you shouldn't be doing. But if you get the right dimension discs, then that will be just working fine for you. Now, I just want to mention a few more things. And both of them, you can see, have grooves in them, right? And you don't see any cross-drilled holes. And I'm sure you've seen discs with cross-hilled uh, holes in them. And that's a little bit of show, actually. Um, it had a purpose uh, years and years ago, but nowadays you won't find cross-drilled holes anymore on discs. You can still buy them because they look cool, but really it's not good uh, because those discs, uh, when they heat up, um, they have cold and warm spots. You know, where the holes are, air is coming through and it's cooling down a lot faster than the other areas where there are no holes. So you get tension in the, in the disc and the disc will crack after a while, especially when it's getting hot and cold, hot and cold, it's really gonna crack. So really, you don't want to get a uh, disc with cross-drilled uh, cross holes in them. But why were there initially? Well, long time ago, um, yeah, sound like a, a fairy tale, right? Long time ago. Um, disc pads were made, made out of a certain substance and when the brakes were applied on the disc, they became hot and the disc pads would emit a gas. And the gas would actually be in between the brake pad and the disc itself. A kind of a cushion. And then the brake efficiency would go down and the gas would remain there and, and it could not get escape and that is a problem so if we had uh, cross drilled holes in the disc then that gas can actually be extracted through those holes and that was the purpose of cross drilled uh, discs but now guess what nowadays brake pads don't have that issue anymore uh, there is almost no more gas left that builds up so don't worry about that instead you will find the the grooved um, disc uh, discs basically as you can see here and they will kind of wipe the pad you know whatever little bit of gas that this might still be there they just wipe it off you know so this is really good so you'll find it on on the racetrack uh, on any performance car you will find uh, grooved uh, disc packs uh, discs and not uh, cross drilled sometimes you see the combination uh, but again the cross drill is really a show aspect if you ask me i'm no expert but that's at least what i know um so the only drawback on those discs is that the price and they make a bit more noise uh think about these grooves as driving on a tarmac where you have joints and when you drive over it you have to -tuk, to -tuk, to -tuk. well it's a bit the same on this but of course we all have a sport muffler on our car. We like the sound of the engine. You know, you're not going to hear it. I mean, really, you're not going to hear it. Uh, but if you're really that sensitive to noise, then maybe you might hear it. And then again, our Lotuses are rattling enough by themselves. So I am not worried about that whatsoever. This little bit of noise that these brakes are making. And it's basically nothing. So my recommendation is... If you want to reduce some weight on your car, you want to have easy maintenance and you want to reduce the heat on the central hub or the bearing, then go for aluminum-based bell brakes. 
Thank you for viewing. And if you have any comments or experiences, or you don't agree with me at all, put your comments up. Give me a thumbs down, whatever, but say why, and I will really enjoy reading it because I'm always willing to learn. Thank you guys for watching.